No, it's not smushed together with anything. It's just like a one. It's all like one drops. Yeah, he's Hex just. Parasite. What's this Doomsayer card? Draven Doomsayer. Oh, it's a combo with Draven Doomsayer. Draven Doomsayer is the the anthem, the colorless white white two two that makes one ones. Oh. And then you can hex Parasite down yeah. to four life, and just alpha them. So this deck is just trying to alpha people out. And four face shields, so he can he can hex Parasite all the way down to four. Yeah. Face shield to give everything protection. Doomsayer to give everything bonus. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, me and Ben Luckos talked about this deck, but we didn't we didn't really think it you know could come together. But it's pretty cool. It's it's ten planes, uh, eight duel. He's only playing twenty lands. Uh, very aggressive deck, so you'll definitely see that in action. Mm -hmm. Jeremy Scott, All right. he's on the left. What did your guy have? Jason Jesse is playing Naya Ramp. Uh, he, it's nothing that like I've ever seen before. It's got some. Okay, so I'll just run through the deck list: two Acidic Slime, two Elish Norn, three Huntmaster, four Primeval Titan, two, three Solemn, two Sun Titan, one Gideon Jura, three Day, three Green Sun, one Oblivion Ring, four Ramping Girl, two Ratchet Bombs, four Spheres, one White Sun Zenith. A bunch of lands that we're gonna hope can cast all the spells appropriately. Sure. And then Cyborg, nothing too interesting. He's got three group relentless, one group primal hunter, one Karn, one Thrun. All right. Who do, who do, who do, who do you think's favorite in this matchup? Is it the the white weenie combo deck? I'm gonna go with the white weenie because this deck's gonna dirtle around a little bit, and white weenie may just be able to alpha strike them. Yeah. This this white weenie deck seems really cool. Uh, Mostly, can, yeah. It's, the fun factor is pretty yeah. awesome. All right. So humans is on the draw. Jason leaves with the Evolving Wilds. Jeremy goes with a Seacrum Coast and a and Champion, champion. Of the Parish. So that's that's probably you know one of his better starts. I mean, starting a game with Champion of the Parish is like the best start. Yeah. So he, he he's looking for a turn two gather, right? Uh, yeah, ga gather or another champion would be great. Champion hold face shield. Or, or like champion like Doom Traveler and just like yeah, or champion would. champion and just like go all in next turn. Well, cool. risk it all. Why not? I mean, if you have two champions, you just got to go for it. All right, so it's like Jason's gonna untap. Yep. He got confused for a second. <laughs> he's gonna untap. Yep, we got that. He's like, he's turn like, two untap. It's like whose turn is this? <laughs> all right. So there's a rampant growth. All right, rampant growth's gonna let Jason Jesse excel. Through He's Jeremy probably Scott. the mountain right here. There's one mountain. Yeah, he, he he probably has to go search up the mountain. Yeah, there it is. All right, so Jason's you know developing his board, trying to you know be able to cast his big monsters a bit quicker. Yeah, and I wonder what magic's gonna look like when the scars of Mirrodin lands go away. These aggressive dual lands have just been just changed magic. Oh yeah, I mean the the scars lands are just great, you know. Do we have the champion? Uh, we have the champion. Oh, don't know. tell me you have another one. No. Oh. All right, so uh, Jeremy off to uh, a pretty fast start with uh, two champions. Those guys can get fairly large over the next couple of turns. Would you say they get in charge as well? In charge? I'm not. I'm not sure. All right, so Jesse just passes on four. I mean, he doesn't have Huntmaster or Solemn. Yeah. Is there anything else? Mm -hmm. Green Sun? Nothing at all. So. Oh, is this the gather? Are we gathering some the talents? Gather would be great here if Jeremy. I, I feel like Jeremy just slammed it. Oh wow, what would he it is a gather. Ugh. So he's gonna That's have a so four much four. Damage. He's gonna have a three three, and he's gonna have two one ones. So definitely, definitely, you know, uh, a, a scary board nonetheless. Jeremy's got uh, some 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 big guys, and he's turning them sideways. So let's see if Jason's gonna do anything. I mean, he has to. He has to do something. Are, are these? Maybe is he trying to draw a white source for a day judgment? Like, what is his out in this game? Well, I mean, he does have three day judgment, but he, he only has one white source. Maybe getting that mountain, you know, might come back to hurt him. We'll uh, we'll see if he ends the I, game. I mean, with I day. don't even know if he has uh, day judgment in wow, here. Honor. So that's, that's lethal. Honor puts lethal, so these ink monsters are going to have to start jumping in the way. Yeah, this is uh, a fast start. Jeremy didn't get his, his hex parasite combo, but he uh, you know still managed to... Could just be a turn five win. Yeah, all right. Yeah, there so we go. Jason just scoops. Jason could have... Uh, At least jumped, but he probably didn't have the day. You don't think so? I don't know. I don't know what he would have had. I don't know. That, that, that was weird and interesting, to say the least. So, uh, all right. So Jeremy's going to go to sideboarding. 
Uh, Jeremy is probably going to bring in uh, a couple of Talias, I think. Talia yeah. might, uh, you know, help against Day of Judgment and Oblivion Ring and, you know, the Rampard Rope. Yeah, they, they, they're very good against that. Yeah, and uh, he might, he might, he might want to bring in a couple of uh, surgical extractions. What do you think about that? I don't know what he'd want a surgical extraction. Extraction. I mean, he's an aggressive deck. I, I think you want the surgical extraction when it's high impact, like trying to stop turn four Elish Norns from from like a reanimator strategy. Yeah. yeah, that's that's what you want your surgicals for. I think yeah. if he's going to bring anything, I could see him bringing in his celestial purges. Okay. To uh, just deal with Huntmaster, but he might not even think that that uh, Jason has Huntmasters. Sure. So uh, so yeah, maybe he only brings in like the uh, the the, the Thalios. Yeah. And yeah. uh, over here. Jason's probably going to bring in his Batter Skulls, his Ratchet Bomb, his Oblivion Ring. I don't think he'll bring in any Planeswalkers, but he, I, I think those are the choices. I think I think Batter Skulls very good against human-based strategies as well as Ratchet Bomb. Now, do, do you think it's at all su surprising that Jason doesn't have a fourth Day of Judgment in his sideboard? Like, isn't that the card you always want against these? Yeah, beat -down or decks? like Whip Flare or something, something that just deals with more creatures. I think I think uh, Jason's deck is a little anti-aggressive light, like. Actually, I don't even know. I don't really get why he's three colors. I think he just likes his cards. I think, I think this is the kind of guy that's like, I like playing with Sun Titan. <laughs> sure. So, so you think you guys just made it pretty much the same deck that Kibler won with? I mean, I don't know what Sun Titan really benefits. Like, I don't know the benefits of playing three colors and still running two Kessigs and four Ink Moths. Maybe like he had mana issues that game. So. Yeah, maybe he took a book out of uh, Ephros page. Uh, Ephros mana base was a lot better than this, just because he he wasn't trying to cast anything but Elish Norn. Which, which made things relevant because you usually found enough white sources by the time you cast Elish Norn, but you wouldn't find enough to cast the rest of the spells. I didn't know you opened a Life Finale, too. Yeah, Life Finale. I think I want to play Life Finale next weekend at the Grand Prix. Uh, in what? In one of my sideboard of the Esper. If I play Esper. Or Blue Black. It's, it's, it's pretty good. Even though it costs six mana, it's pretty good against the, uh, the, the ramp decks because you get to take away all their titans. <laughs> But like, if they if you're wrathing something against ramp, then that means that they probably have a titan in play, which then that means that they have a bunch of lands in play. Like, I mean, of course, like I don't even think titans are your biggest fear. I'd much rather doomblade because your your goal is to just put a curse into play. Sure. Like once you have a curse in play, like the game's almost over. And, and what do you think about precursor golem? No. No, you're not I a mean, fan. maybe you can sideboard it in if you're a ramp deck in some matchups, and it could be really good. But for the most part, it's not that good. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I signed up for the Modern Challenge. I'll see you guys later. I had fun this weekend. All right, so Brad Nelson's leaving the booth. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm not leaving. Oh, I, I was excited. I'm just kidding. Two, I know you were. <laughs> All right, so... Gerard's like, I can deal with this on my own. So, so Jason's going to be on the play this game. Uh, let's check Twitter. It looks like we got a couple more tweets in. You guys are doing a great job tweeting in. Make sure you guys tweet in. Later, try to win that uh, that free premium that we're oh, going to yeah, be giving we're, away. We're going to be giving away a lot of stuff later on once we hit top eight and top yeah. four. And that Gen Con uh, badge. Gen Con badge for, for uh, whoever gets it in first place. Yep. And we'll have we'll have good questions. Uh, will I'll, we? I'll, I'll, I'll let Gerard handle it. All right. So sometimes He's got I, a beautiful mind for those kind of things. Sometimes I come with the hard questions. Sometimes I come with the easy questions. So it's just all most depends. of them are you unusual. Yeah. So uh, Brad, what do you think about this? What is the most or best unusual play mat that you've ever seen somebody, you know, play at maybe, uh, oh, with a Waffle House? I don't even know, like, yeah. So somebody had a Waffle House menu? At an SCG? I mean, okay. I, don't, I don't really look into play mats. The, the, the funny story I have of a play mat is I used a play mat once, like the 2007 States Top 8 one, which is Telling Time, and I cast a Telling Time while using it wrong. Like, I incorrectly resolved my telling time <laughs> using a telling time play mat. I was playing Dragon Storm 1 FNM or something, and I, like, I don't even know. I thought it was a ser I don't even know what I did with it. Like, yeah. the cards were just not going in the right places. Okay. But I, I don't really pay attention to opponents' play mats. I think the silliest is when they put a bunch of PTQ pins on it. Those are the, the, the silliest, in my opinion. Why, why are you hitting on all the... All right, well... We're, we're back to the match. Jason leads off with Evolving Wilds, and Jeremy leads off with an Elite Vanguard. Some people would call it a Savannah Lion. No. I call it an Elite Vanguard. Just because that's what it says in the card and name. It's, and it's a human, so it, it's it's much better than Savannah Lion. Well, what's Savannah Lion's creature type? Lion. Are you sure? 
cat. I don't know. See, now you're questioning yourself. Come on, Brad, you're supposed to know these things. I'm going to assume it's a lion. Lion, final answer. All right, well, somebody will probably tweet in that, that you're incorrect. Yeah, it's going to... Wait, is it Cat Warrior? It's... it's. I'm not going to say. All right, so... Do you even know? Jason plays a Ratchet Bomb. Ratchet Bomb's pretty good versus uh, Jeremy's deck. Although and Jeremy can... Leading off with a Kessig uh, for a second land is kind of interesting. Like, does that mean he doesn't have another... Maybe. All right. What is this? A Doom Traveler. All right. Oh, it's, it's a cat. Originally it was it a is. lion, and, and now it's a cat. So, all right. There's a, a Scar's Land that I think Jason just ripped off the top of his deck. Oh, wow. And I can see a Sun Titan that will not see the light of day, I'm assuming. Yeah. A little, little cloudy. Is... <laughs> Is, is that what you're going for? All right, so Jeremy is, uh, he should probably attack before he plays the honor. All right, I like that play. Regardless, somebody's asking you to talk about Glisten Elf. I don't, I don't even know if that's an inside joke or not. Which card? Glisten Elf. Glisten Elf. Oh, Glisten Elf. Yeah, all right, well, back to the match for now. We'll talk about uh, that later. Town Folk. Yeah, Town Folk. Uh, so, so Jeremy has, you know, three one ones to play. Yes. One is a spirit flying, two are soldiers. And he also has double honor in his hand, it looks like. So We're he might go honor, honor, and he might just yeah. win that way. That kind of looked like when he played it, he, he was saying go, go at the same yeah, time. Yeah, 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 I really did. Or it's like the way to pop your collar when you cast your spell. like. Yeah. All right, so he atta attacks for six. Jesse is back is against the wall, has to find out. He is drawing a bunch of land, so is this look how, a... Look how bad his mana is, though, you know? Yeah, it, like, I don't uh, like it. Yeah. Aesthetic Slam takes care of the honor of the pier. But and I think we, he has another one. Yeah, if, even if he has another one, I think Jesse has Sun Titan hand. If he does, he just gets Ratchmon back and starts blowing up zeros. Well, he has Gideon as well. I don't think he has a six land, though. It's interesting that he's attacking. Yeah, wow. Just to deal one damage. I mean, of course attack with your spirit token, but I don't know why you sacrifice a token for one damage. Yeah, what is his plan? Like, there's a Thalia. That, that helps. Yeah, I, I don't like that attack with the... Uh, no. Yeah. Jesse's at... Or Jason's at way too high a level. Yeah, he really fling is. Fling a token at him. Yeah. Let's see. J Jason's looking for that sixth land. I think he might, he might have got yeah, it. I thought I think he got there. In the form of a foil ink Now let's nexus. see if there's a Sun Titan. What's that his nexus from? Is that Besiege? Uh, yes. So there's a Pamela Titan. Yeah, I'm surprised he didn't get back the... What, did not have a Sun Titan in his hand? Uh, he might have, but it, the, the tokens aren't really a threat at the moment. Okay. Yeah, I guess... I, I can't guarantee that there's a Sun Titan in his hand, so... Sure. Yeah, it looks like Jeremy's in uh, in trouble this game. Why... I mean, do you think Spellskite is, is really that good? I mean, like, sure, it stops the, the wolf run... But is that what he wants to be doing? Does he have a spell scout in his hand? Yeah. Do you get boarded them in? It 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 stops Wolfram, but I don't think it's a great great card overall. Does it stop anything else? No, right? I guess it stops like the Huntmaster. But I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I still don't think it's yeah. that good. I, I, I feel like Jeremy has especially with Jeremy being on the draw, he has to try to be a, a, as aggressive as possible, you know? Mm -hmm. Alright, so Doom Traveler comes down and and a hex parasite, and he's just gonna pass the turn. That's yeah, I mean, it's. I it, mean, the cool thing about this board position is Jesse like, does something wrong or taps out or something. Like, if if Jeremy does have the Thraven Dooms there, he can just. Oh, he can't really put anything on the stack to hex parasite. No, hex parasite could target anything. Oh, it can. Yeah, it can just yeah. do it instantly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. There's a Gideon, so I think Jason's going to tap six for this Gideon right here. Oh, there's a Gideon now? Yeah, he had a Gideon last turn, but he wanted to play Premule Titan, which is definitely right. Yes. I mean, Premule Titan has to attack. <laughs> I mean, that's why you have Titan, because you, you play it, you get more lands, you attack, get more lands. So... <coughs> See, this is weird that, that he plays Gideon, because the, the Parasite is going to kill it. I mean, the Parasite cannot kill a Gideon. Why? You need like a million lands. He's stuck on two lands. Oh, he can't use the Phyrexia? Yeah, the Phyrexia is just to oh, activate. Just to start. Oh, yeah. okay. But right. you can just keep removing zero to get to lose your life total. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was thinking you could just pay two life to No, that card would be way too good if you could just pay two life to rule a counter. 
Yeah. No, it's it's black Frexia X. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. So Gideon says everybody has to attack him. All right, just making sure everything's legit. Yep. Making sure he's even... paying that one extra mana for Natalia. Oh yeah, that's yeah. what it is. Yeah. So. All right, so I think we might be uh, seeing a game three. Yeah, I definitely think we're going to game three. <laughs> All right, so Doom Traveler is going to chump block. Just to, to turn into a spare token. Yeah. Prevents one damage as well, if that's of any relevance. All right, so he finally has his third land. Does he have enough? Oh, no, everything attacks getting him. Yeah. So it's looking, uh... Yeah, I don't really know what, what Jeremy could do here. He could, uh... He's doing some math in his head. I mean, like... Jason has lethal damage on board. So Jeremy's gonna have to come up with some sort yeah, of plan. Yeah, he's gonna have to figure out something. Yeah. I mean, I don't think there, there is a plan. Looking through a 75, I don't see a situation unless he had an Oblivion Ring yeah. to get out of this. Like, running all his guys into a Gideon just does not seem great. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's like, he has like one Oblivion Ring, but he obviously doesn't have it here. And even if he did have it, he couldn't even cast it because the, the, the Thalia is actually... His own Thalia, yeah. Yeah, you know. So, uh, he has an Honor of the Pure that he can pay for three mana. You could, you could play a spell skite? Maybe maybe that would help a little? I mean, it just helps soak up some trample damage. Yeah. I think that's might what he had. Like, he might just have to play... I don't know. Yeah, I guess Charles I... Uh, stage, yeah, there's, 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 there's yeah, not much for Jeremy to get out of this. Yeah, I mean, that's just game because all mm -hmm. his guys are going to have to swing a Gideon. And then Jason will just attack back for the win. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, Jason should just put the acidic slime in, on a token. Yeah, in front of the token, and then he'll he'll the uh, the Gideon will tick down. Yeah, I mean Jeremy can potentially get the token. If, why, why would he block Thalia? Thalia has first strike. No, no, no I think he blocked Hex Parasite. Oh, he blocked Hex Parasite. Oh, okay. Yeah, removes the counter yeah. from it. Trades Hex Parasite with acidic slime. Sure. It looked like he pointed to Thalia. No. No, he did. Yeah. Why, 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 why would you do that? I don't know. Maybe he forgot Thalia had first strike. I don't know. Yeah. What does he have? He has uh, the ability to trample for seven, so he can attack for a total of 19 trample damage this turn. No, but but Jeremy has the, uh, the spell skite. Oh, yeah, he can't. Yeah, so he can't. So now all of a sudden, like... I mean, it's not like Jeremy's going to win, but, I mean, Jeremy... Oh, no, he's looking... He's a Don't ratchet good, bomb. Yeah, I didn't like that acidic slime block at all. No. So what's Gideon going to do? Force everything to attack again. Yeah, Gideon ticks up. He's got multiple primeval titans in hand. Why not play one of the titans, right? I think he will, won't he? Yeah, I was swinging with my Titan. Yeah, of course you attack with Titan. Yeah. Don't don't try to keep the Gideon alive. Use the Gideon as a sacrifice to kill yeah, your ex opponent. Exactly, yeah. So he, so I'm pretty sure he wants to swing with this Titan, but it looks like he's, he's casting something else this turn. So he's going to play a, a Primeval Titan first. It was a foil Primeval Titan. This makes you want this makes you want to go buy more uh, Untold Packs. <laughs> Just try to open a foil... Primeval Titan or some type type of foil titan. Yeah. Why not? Alright, so he goes get two more lands. I'm really surprised that that Titan didn't attack yet. I mean, the Primeval Titan attacking puts Jeremy like definitely in lethal next turn. Yeah. Alright, he's gonna attack now. Alright, good. Trigger after shuffling and cutting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes people just like, you know, save time and Alright, so Jeremy's just gonna scoop it off to save time. Yeah. And they're going to game three. I think Jeremy's going to readjust his sideboard a bit. Yeah. I don't really like Spellskite. 
Um, I thought about doing, like, I don't know if it'll ever give you, like, an advantage, but I definitely see, like, that strategy where you're way ahead on the board and your opponent maybe has a 1% outer, maybe 5% outer, probably worse, and you, like, shuffle every single time and don't shortcut at all, and you shuffle three times in the turn, and then the third time they're just like, screw it, let's just scoop, because I've been sick of, like, sitting here for five minutes. So, so kind of make them, like, tilt scoop? Yeah. Okay. I, don't, I, I mean, in situ you see it like that. If, if I think if Jason shortcutted, Jeremy was going to see the top card. Yeah. I mean, do you think sur a, a surgical extraction has to be better than a spell skate? Well, I don't, I don't think I don't think you should change any. You should keep the main deck cards. All the main deck cards I think are better than both of those, aren't they? Yeah. Well, you got to bring in the three Thalias. Yeah. If there was like, I, I, like when you're playing the, like, an aggressive deck against like a control deck that's like slow and. It, it, like surgical extraction could randomly be good. Like you no, could, like, it, it can't because you're not going to ever kill a primeval titan. And what are, what's going to be in the graveyard for you to surgical? You know, maybe maybe, maybe it's like a day of judgment, and like he has like another in his hand. Yeah, but then or, you're just wasting uh, another. Like the thing about like maybe it's about, like a like a ratchet bomb, and his whole plan is to like sun titan back a bomb to kill all my tokens. But then you're just like boom, you know, like take your th bomb. There's away. these corner case situations, but like I think more often it's just going to not do anything. It's not going to be yeah. relevant enough. Yeah. Plus, there's always value in like picking up your opponent's deck and like tilting them as you look through like every card. And it's like ah, on moto just print screening them. Yeah. Like before a big tournament. <laughs> I love like you always see some people for a pro tour when when the moto format's alive, like just run a deck with four main surgical strategies, just run through two mans. Yeah, just just to see everybody else's deck and yeah. stuff. Yeah, because you find some people playing their pro tour deck on Moto. Oh sure, yeah. So all right, so Jeremy will be on the play for game three. Uh, in case you're just joining us, I'm Gerard Fabiano here with Brad Nelson. Jeremy's playing a, a human deck, but but not the average typical human deck. He's playing combo with hex parasite. Yeah, it's a very interesting brew. Definitely more aggressive. He's also playing you know vapor snag and ponder. So yeah, he has slightly more blue than the. Mm -hmm. uh, than the average player. On the other hand, Jason, wh what does Jason have? Jason is playing Naya Ramp. It's uh, somewhat interesting. I don't think his mana really works. We've been seeing it not really work that well. Uh, but for the most part, he's just pretty. I think he's just playing all the cards he likes to play with. Okay. Like all the powerful green, red, and white rampish cards: Sun Titan, Primeval Titan, Huntmaster, Elish Norn, Acidic Slime, Solemn, Day of Judgment, Green Sun Zenith. A and bunch that, of ramp, a white sun zenith. I mean, you really can't blame a guy too who, who you know likes to play with certain cards, and they're all good cards. It's not like yeah. he likes to play with you know ghostly possession, and he's making a ghostly possession you know orchard spirit deck. You know, sure he, he likes Elish Nor and he thinks it's good for the format, which it is. Yeah. He decides to throw it in his his you know normally red green. How do you deck. come up with ghostly prison like? I mean, orchard spirit. Like, you, you could just make a ghostly prison. I will have the line that. Neither of those cards are played by anyone in this room. Exactly. Because nobody likes them. Yeah. You know? If Jason liked them, maybe he would be playing them, but <laughs> for his own sake, he likes the better you cards. You don't like Orchard Spirit? I honestly don't. I think people undervalue it. I think it's better than people give it credit for. I don't think it's a great card, but I definitely think you can like sacrifice your three slot to get that in, in certain situations. Do you ever attack your Orchard Spirit into their, uh, their spider to like bluff? Because, like, with Orchard Spirit, only creatures with flying or reach. But lots of times people miss that reach part, and that 2-4 spider has reach. I don't think anyone would ever get bluffed on that. Really? I've never seen All right. it. No. The next time I play against you, that's it's coming in. What? I don't I don't make those small technical error mistakes. Oh, really? All right. Brad like does that it. little one? Like, not knowing that my card can block an Orchard Spirit? And when I was telling the story, I see, all right, but well, back to the match at hand. We have a Glacier Fortress, turn one, all right, right by Jeremy Scott. No turn one play, you know, kind of, kind of unfortunate. And uh, he's at a, he's at a second turn ponder, so yeah. we're not really too sure what he's looking for. Yeah, not a very aggressive start for Jeremy. He, he against the planes on top, maybe he's short lands. Yeah, against a ramp deck, I, I, I like Mulligan, and if you're starting with a Glacial Fortress, really? Maybe, into a ponder, maybe, maybe, that's kind of a weak start. Maybe his hand is just really good. All right, so Jason's going to ramp with Sphere of the Suns. Okay. And move on to Jeremy. Let's see what explosive start Jeremy has for turn three. He has to have something good because he kept a hand that yeah. didn't do anything on turn one and pondered on turn two. Yeah, otherwise he's just going to lose because J Jason's going to play a Solemn next turn. Yeah. And then you know how that goes, Solemn into, into Big Fatty. Don't be a Doom Traveler go. Ugh, this is not... Uh, 
How how is this not a mulligan? Yeah. And he kept the one lander too. It was it was a tap ponder. I mean, how could you keep a one lander and not do something better than this once you draw land? Well, I I, I think Jeremy knows his deck probably you know better than we do. So maybe yeah. he has a sort of plan that we're not really expecting. That's true. Well, this is solemn. An old school solemn. Is it old school solemn? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's a mountain. All right. So the mountain gets searched up. Yep. The beautiful unhinged lands. Those lands are worth money. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, I like the Zendikar lands. Ever since those, I don't really use anything else. Okay. Uh, Jeremy untaps draws. Let's see if he can do anything. Solemn. It's weird that a turn three Solemn is just holding Jeremy's board. Yeah, there's an honor. Honor uh, doesn't even do anything. No. I mean, maybe you attack with Doom Traveler at least, right? Yeah. You just send it. Yeah, I mean it's still not it's still not very it good. It clears the path for your for your Vanguard. Vanguard at least. But I mean he's getting another card and next turn there's a high chance that he's gonna have a Titan. Yeah. So he actually swings with both, which is kinda surprising. I think he's gonna trade with the Elite Vanguard here. That seems like the, the best play. Yeah. Jason uh, should draw his card, yeah. Draws his card. So this is the turn. Does Jason have the wolf or the primeval titan? So he's got his six land. Foil ink moth. Guy likes his foils. Ah, uh, there's one. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty yeah, sure. I'm pretty sure Titans come down in yeah. the first land he taps is the sphere. sphere. Yeah. Oh, green sun. For five. Wow, acidic six. slime on the uh, glacier fortress. If he does it, that'd be pretty sweet. Yeah. Heavy blow to Jeremy's uh, board. And if he had the face shield open, he could protect his land. Yeah. A lot of people don't know that. Ooh, oh, he's in the honor. Really? Why do you think he hits the honor there? Because he's not thinking about the mana denial, and he just wants to kill the card that like makes the Doom Traveler 2-2. Okay. I don't know. I, I would. I personally would have went for the Glacier Fortress there. You know, kind of you know denies mana. But uh, we'll see if this pays off for Jason. Jeremy draws. Oh, Jeremy draws a third land. Throw him in Doom Slayer for the punishment. Maybe a Doom. Uh, I think that I think that is a Doom Slayer at the yeah, front. Yeah, that's, that's a Doom Slayer. Yeah, that, that could have all been prevented if Jason just. All right. So Jason decides to read the Doom Slayer. <laughs> you guys First don't know, time we've seen it on on camera. Yeah, Doom Slayer actually makes one one tokens. Uh, every time and, and pretty much for free. All he has to do is, is, uh, is tap it. No, no mana requirement after the initial three to, to cast it. So Jason has uh, access to seven lands now. What does Jason have? This one's a green sun zenith. A green sun zenith. Oh, Elish. Elish Nord. Oh. Wow. I guess that's game. <laughs> I, I guess that, that was maybe one of the reasons why... He wanted to get rid of the honor, just yeah. So then that can't protect things with Elishorn. But I mean, still killing. It, no, it all a makes land. sense. It all makes sense. Yeah, but still killing land seems better to stop like O-ring and and stuff like that. I you mean, know? even if you drop an Elishorn and it kills their guys and then it gets O-ring, it still had so much value that. Yeah, so Jeremy's just thinking like, what what can I even do here? This looks. Uh, this just shows the power of Elishorn's out of New Phyrexia, right? Yes, it's New Brexit. All right, uh, that's the match. Handshake. Jason takes it. All Jeremy's right. just knows he can't do anything to an active Elishnorn. Yeah, I mean, even if Jeremy had a slightly better hand, I think Jason's hand was too strong. Yeah. So that's the problem with human decks. It's just like if your opponent has a good draw, you do nothing. You have like, like a, 